Bumblebee, the movie that came out a number of years ago, was a really, really important film because you were talking about a Transformers franchise that had literally been run into the ground. I mean, it was it was beyond dying. It was dead. And then came along this Bumblebee movie that Travis Knight, the director of Kubo and the Two Strings, which is awesome, came along and did what was seemingly impossible. He resuscitated a corpse. He took this Transformers corpse and he resuscitated it and he breathed life into it. He breathed a humanity into it. He made something special and made it a character-driven film, even about robots, right? I'll still never forget being at, watching Bumblebee for the first time and then starting on Cybertron and seeing all the battle going on and like seeing Soundwave. And I was just like, ah, I was losing my mind, right? But ever since then, 2018, Bumblebee, since then, Travis Knight, who did Kubo and the Two Strings, that got Oscar attention. Bumblebee, which kind of brought this decrepit body kind of thing back to life. It breathed, got a heartbeat going again into it, right? Hasn't directed anything since. In almost six years. Hasn't directed almost anything since. And then, kind of in the same vein, everybody's been waiting for this He-Man movie. One of <laughs> Masters of the Universe. Yeah. Our friend Christian Harloff says that a, a He-Man movie, a Masters of the Universe live action movie could be the perfect cross between Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. It's like, it, it really could. That's that's what it can be, and yet nothing. We had uh, uh, not James Wan, but uh, the director of Crazy Rich Asians, um, John Cho. John John Cho. There was some talk for a while that he was going to direct one. Then there was something else. Then a bunch of concept art came about seven years ago. Remember that one with Battle Cat? The, yeah, that concept that art came out. Like, oh, it's moving ahead, and then nothing. Then out of nowhere, yesterday, the Hollywood Reporter writes this: Travis Knight may just have the power. <laughs> the Leica CEO and part-time filmmaker is in early talks to direct the long-in-the-works live-action adaptation of Masters of the Universe for Amazon MGM Studios, The Hollywood Reporter has confirmed. Knight isn't coming alone. Chris Butler, a longtime Knight con collaborator who wrote and co-directed Paranorman and who wrote Kubo and the Two Strings, among other projects, has been brought on to rewrite the script. This is awesome from top to bottom in this. Bringing along, first of all, having a writer and director duo is great because they, they already know each other's shorthand. They know what their sensibilities are. And from a writing point of view, the guy who wrote Kubo, Paranorman is a delightful yeah. movie too. Yeah, it is. It's completely delightful. And for anybody who hasn't seen Kubo and the Two Strings, you're thinking, another animated movie, all like, he just does kids' movies. Uh, you got to watch Kubo and the Two Strings. It's it's heartfelt and moving and has mythology and true emotion and it's it's a great great movie. Now you team him up with the director of that uh, and the guy who who did the near impossible with that Bumblebee movie. I'll tell you what, Rob. I mean, there's a lot of directors' names you could have thrown out there that would have got me kind of excited for this, but Travis Knight is definitely one of them for two reasons. One, he would be a great director to come and do He Man, but also. I'm excited that he's directing again. Like, why hasn't this guy directed? Maybe he's just been busy being a CEO. But having only directed those two films and then nothing else, I love this news. I I don't know what on earth you can do with a He-Man in live action because mm -hmm. all I can think about is Dolph Lundgren. But, and uh, who was it again that played Skeletor in that? Oh, Frank Langella. Frank Langella. That little thing when he comes out of the goo at the end. Like, oh my God. Anyway. Courtney Cox, too, by the way. Mm, my original, my very first celebrity crush was Courtney Cox. She was a human, right? Yes. She was she the was first a... celebrity I ever saw in Los Angeles when I moved here back in uh, 1988. Really? Yep. Was that before or after the uh, Bruce Springsteen Dancing in the Dark video? I guess it would have been after It that. was after. I I, <clears throat> I was I was at a uh, ATM across from the Hard Rock at Beverly Center, and I was just uh, w standing behind a woman getting her money. She turns around, and I was standing there going, it was one of those things where, you're Courtney Cox. <laughs> and she was like, "Why, well, yes, I am." I'm like, "Love your work." Be before, you you, before you get to Rob, like, I just want to point out the Bumblebee thing again. That's a secondary character he made a good movie out of. Yeah. Like, he didn't use Optimus. He didn't use Megatron. It just shows you how much good writing and a good script can do yeah. for anything. Yeah. So, 
So I'm all for this. Like it's 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 good news that he's going to be a. Tank. The one so, thing I'll say is this though, and it's imperative. Speaking of the Dolph Lundgren movie, don't bring them to Earth. Don't bring them to Earth. Yeah, don't. I I, I don't want to see He Man and Man at Arms and Manny Faces and. And, and whatever, and evil man, and, and I don't want to see them on Earth. Have it on Eternia. Just, that's where He Man is supposed to be. That's where the story takes place. Have it there, guys. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. On average, it takes about thirty days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So, if saving money was on your twenty twenty four list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a one hundred percent guaranteed way to save you money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile for a limited time. Wireless plans from Mint Mobile are fifteen dollars a month when you purchase a three month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for fifteen bucks a month. I've told you guys many times that after switching to Mint Mobile. I am spending less than a third on my cell bill than I used to with a major carrier. Say goodbye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All Mint plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And don't worry about having to change phones or numbers. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. So guys, to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 50 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bills to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Anyway, Rob, okay. you hear this news? What do you think? Well, you know, I have to tell you, before Bumblebee came out, I got hired by, I guess, Paramount, and they were, I had to go interview Travis Knight. And I interviewed him for this licensing. They were going to make a licensing video that they were going to take to the license, the yearly licensing convention. And I talked to him. I sat down with him for about an hour and interviewed him. And he was an Im incredibly impressive guy. Like as a kid, he was like a DJ and he did all this crazy stuff. Cause you know, he's the son of Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. <laughs> so he grew up as a wealthy kid, but he was a really thoughtful, very impressive guy. And, I thought, and, and the listening to him wax rhapsodic about the Transformers and what he hoped to achieve and what, what he was doing with Bumblebee made me really respect him, which is, as you pointed out, it has been surprising to me that he hasn't directed another live-action feature since then. So I am. I think this choice is perfect for the reasons that you stated. You know, I want to say, I want to say it was by a screenwriter named Mark Persevich. I read a screenplay called Grey Skull. 20 years ago and uh it was i thought a great serious not totally not it wasn't godzilla x kong but it was a really serious take on he-man and the masters of the universe that i thought was great i'm sure i'm like this this movie has to get made never got made but it proved to me that a he-man movie could really be something uh worthy of like you said a cross between lord of the rings and star wars it just really depends on the approach and if anybody can pull this off travis knight is the man because he and his screenwriter will take this seriously but not totally seriously because it is after all he man he'll do what he did to bumblebee i think he'll make a great a great movie it's a great choice and finally for the first time i'm excited about a he-man movie i, I guess i'm not i'm not an ex actor in x role sort of thing but he-man presents a particular challenge because there is a particular physical, he is called He-Man. And I got to say right now, although I'm sure Knight will come up with somebody great. For now, only one guy kind of comes to my mind, <laughs> Jonathan. I, I mean, that right now, because Alan Richson right now is hot. Not only is Reacher a big hit, he's in that new Henry Cavill movie with, with Henry Cavill, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yes. So... He's kind of rolling that. So he is, he checks both the main boxes. He's a solid, good actor. And he brings the physicality you're going to need for, for he. -Man. And he's not too young. He's yes. not a teenager. Yeah. Like the first Masters of the Universe uh, with Dolph Lundgren, they never touched on the Prince Adam aspect of He Man, right? He was always. No, they -Man. didn't. They never touched that's, on that. That's important to me. And also, Battle Cat. You got to have Battle Cat. Oh, you 100% have that yeah, battle. Which are two elements that that Masters of the Universe disconnected with. 
That's why it disconnected with me when I watched him when I was younger. I was like, where's Battle Cat? Where's Prince Adam? There's none of that, those things, because those things were important to me when I was watching the cartoon series. You know, And, and here's the thing, too. I, I can already hear that some people will say, Alan Rich and his He-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if I can see him as a Prince Adam. Here, here's the other thing that they have to do, and I know this is going to piss some He-Man and Masters of the Universe purists off. I understand that, but this is live action. As ridiculous as Superman and Clark Kent going, I'm Clark Kent, I'm Superman, I'm Clark Kent, I'm Superman. You can't have Prince Adam look exactly like He-Man right. and and have a have a suspend disbelief that not everybody and not just look exactly like he-man have the physique if you see prince adam in his little <laughs> tight white long sleeve shirt he's fucking buff Does well yeah but he talks like this so yeah, you would never know like no one knows part, the new netflix uh animation animated series they do it way better he's a sc skinny scrawny kid you're gonna have to shazam this you're gonna have to get a kid actor that, well, uh, not a not a kid, but a little like bit a, younger. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a younger uh, actor, smaller, a little Scrawny, more baby face, a little bit. You Steve know. Rogers from Captain America: yeah, The First Avengers. I was just thinking the same exactly. thing before he took the serum. Yeah, yeah. So, or uh, or they could do it that Prince Adam transforms into He Man permanently. That yeah, once yeah, Prince Adam has ascended yeah. to. Yeah, you can. I I lean more towards Ray though. That part of the story of Master of the Universe is that duality of of Prince Adam. And He Man, and I and I do kind of. So you're right. They can just go. Uh, Skeletor cast a spell on me six years ago, and I'm always He Man right. now. They can do that. To go kind of go the Dolph Lundgren mm -hmm. route. But I would kind of like to see them play the duality. Yeah, a little no, bit. me too. But I think, look, I think Travis Knight and his writer, um, is, are they're going to nail this? I yeah, and I think agree. for the very first yeah. time, this movie's at, not since 1987. They're finally going to get this made. Oh, yeah. I, I'm so excited. They absolutely made the right choices, and it's still never going to happen. <laughs> I know. You I don't know, think so? Man. Do you know how many times? I've been they've waiting said, for We've this. now got our director. We uh. now, we're now doing pre -viz. We're do You know, dude, ever since I was at AMC, worse than they've been doing this. Worse than Blade. No. They go, uh, yeah. It's worse than The Crow. It's, it's worse than The Crow, though The Crow's about to come out. But yeah. so, I, I mean. Isn't that weird? I, it's really weird. <laughs> I'm in a position where I am. I'm gonna wait and see. Yeah. Like I'll believe it when I see it. Give me a trailer. But I, I hope this is it. I hope this is finally the time we've been waiting for, and they got the right director. This uh, is certainly the right director and right uh, and writer destiny. combo. So, let's see how it goes. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campion Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.